live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering Oracle's modern marketing experience. Brought to you by Oracle. Now here's your hosts, John Furrier and Jeff Frick. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Las Vegas for Oracle Marketing Experiences, uh, Modern Marketing Experiences. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE, and my co-host Jeff Frick, general manager of theCUBE. Our next guest is uh, industry author, president of Convince and Convert, Jay Baer, also VIP influence in our book. He's uh, really well regarded, certainly an expert in this field. Welcome to theCUBE. Guys, great thanks for having you. me. Awesome to see you as well. Thanks yeah, for being great. here. Great, we'd love to chat. Certainly do a lot of crowd chats to see you on there, laying down some great authority. You are, you are at a unique perspective. I want you to share with the audience what you talked on the panel uh, here at Oracle Modern Marketing Experiences because they're talking about modern marketing. You look at a lot of companies, you go to other, a lot of other events across the industry. Compare and contrast what's going on here now first, talk about the panel, what was the highlights, and then what's the aha moment out of this event? Yeah, it, it was a really interesting panel that they asked me to, to do in the general session. They called it marketizing. Uh, the principle that, that most brands that have been around for 10 years or longer kind of come out of a creativity-driven, advertising-centric communications model, right? Let's, let's reach our, our audiences by, by TV, by radio, by print, outdoor, all the things we used to do, direct mail even. Uh, and now, we're switching over to this very digitally-centric, data-driven marketing model, but in a lot of cases, brands are still not ready to kind of converge those, even inside their own walls. You still have the brand marketers doing TV, and then you've got the digital guys, like the people here in Modern Marketing Experiences, doing the digital stuff, and, and there's this collision course, right? And one of the things that was interesting in the panel is that Jim Cooper, who's an editor at Adweek, said, look, this is, this is the beginning of the end as advertising as we know it, and that's a pretty heady comment that's to say, look, statement. for a guy coming who, coming from a guy from Adweek, right? Exactly, I mean, I'm like, whoa, <laughs> let's make sure everybody heard what he said, right? He is at Adweek and says, this is the beginning of the end of advertising as we know it. Uh, so that was a really terrific uh, opportunity to, to do a panel like that. We also had uh, Abercrombie and Fitch on the panel talking about their sort of digital transformation, how they've used a lot of the technologies featured uh, here from Oracle Marketing Cloud to kind of level up and do a lot of just-in-time, you know, real-time, highly targeted, personalized kind of things. And I think that's the big takeaway for me of this show in comparison to the lots of other tech shows that I'm at and that you guys are at is, look, we've been talking about integration and customer journey mapping and all that stuff for a decade now but I think it might actually exist. Like, like I think. It's like scary. It's, yeah, it's <laughs> like, like, you know, I heard about this giant catfish that lived by the dam, and everybody talks about the catfish, and now you're like, oh my God, I actually saw the catfish. <laughs> right, you know what I mean? It's like Loch Ness Monster yeah, stuff going on here. Like, yeah, I'm like, weird. floor knocked out of my chair. No, and Oracle has a lot of muscle around it too, so yeah. not only is the marketing cloud, and again, this is, they've done their homework. They really had a, a, a mishmash with the M&A strategy, which was a good strategy, the portfolio looks good on paper, yep. but Kevin did a good job, Kevin Ackleworth, the GM, he basically made the data layer, the interoperable, horizontally scalable component, that is a winning architecture. And <laughs> if they can pull that off, they can still let the apps be personalized, prepackaged right. with big data, yeah. highly differentiated. Yes. So that, if they can pull this off, it's a winning architecture. I, I couldn't agree more. I think, I think the, the acquisition strategy has always been sound, but they're not the only one at the marketing club that has a pretty sound acquisition strategy. But at the end of the day, it's can you integrate it across, across pieces, right? Uh, and, and if they can do it the way they demoed it, then what you're going to see is an average customer buying more and more and more and more of the different pieces of the marketing cloud, which then opens up all the app ecosystem, and all of a sudden now, you've yeah. got an enterprise customer for life because the switching cost gets too high. Yeah, and that's what they talk about. We just had uh, Catherine on, enterprise customer, a customer for life is their, is their mantra, of course. That's the way they price it, too. So you got to give Oracle <laughs> credit right. for that. Yeah. So um, they're, their they're really good at pricing um, and keeping customers for life, whether they want it or not. And that's, but, but you've seen them being more open. But I got, I got your take on the openness of the ecosystem, and I also want to get your take on how this translates into the operationalizing of it. Are people in, in this transformation new world of digital everything enabled? Who runs this stuff? Yeah. Are people yeah. ready to run the catfish that we saw? It's like, oh my yeah. God, this is, it totally exists now. Now it's, now it's a process of how do you budget for it? How do you get the cash? Who owns it? Who runs it? What's the role? Is the, uh, yeah, I couldn't agree more, and we've, we've actually, it was almost done an, an inversion, right? So for, for quite a while, we, we fretted a lot uh, about the software side of it. Like, we want to be able to integrate, we want to be able to have one login, we want to be able to do all these things, uh, and, and now we actually can do that uh, in some cases. 
And now the question is, okay, great, now what we've been promised actually is real, but who is the person pressing those buttons? And that's one of the things we talked about in the panel, is that the skill sets required to do this, like day to day in a company, are not skill sets that a lot of marketing teams have. You're talking about serious data science, real time analytics, that also has to have a layer of creativity on top of it, and, and a lot yeah. of marketing teams just simply don't have that in their org chart. So where do they find it? Do they, do they pull it out of their own IT people? Do they, do they cross train marketers to be data scientists? I mean, I think that's a dubious proposition in some cases. Do they go invent some new job title that says, okay, this is, these are the people who, who make these marketing They got to grow work? their own, know. like a webmaster was in the early days of the web, so right. I certainly see that, but that's going to take time to grow your own. Yeah, of course, years. But I got to get to your point on this. The short term answer would be agency, and I want to get your thoughts on this yeah. because one, the agencies are under siege, and two, boutiques are popping up, but they're popping up with the kind of like the PR perspective, the social media, hey, I'm going to build an app for you and then pass it on to somebody else, or hey, I'm going to be a, a, a boutique a video thing, or I'm going to do this kind of agency work for you. And then you got the monster agencies that are monolithic yep. um, and slow. Yeah, I think there's a real opportunity for specialty agencies that can operate and strategize an actual marketing cloud. To say, okay, our specialty is Oracle Marketing Cloud and we can make it sing. We're your guys, we'll come in, set it up for you, and then train your people how to do the basic stuff, we'll handle the mid-layer stuff. There's a huge opportunity for that kind of consultancy, uh, and not just yeah. for this cloud, but for all the different clouds. Uh, I think that's what we're going to see. Yeah, and that's going to be a new expertise. Yeah, and really developing that expertise. I, I just love your webmaster example because Everything right before it was again. like you know you, you get somebody's kid, they go sit and they make it you know make us a catalog Social media online. Social the right? same thing. I mean, you know, they didn't. It wasn't like people were graduating college with a degree in Twitter. I mean, they they were like, okay, the, you you seem reasonably intelligent and reasonably. You're the young guy in the team, right? You, yeah, you know what Twitter you is. You grew up with this stuff, so here's the logins, <laughs> yeah. right? I mean, and, you know, for lack of a better option, that's what happens. Well, I think the, as commerce moves into this social realm and this new digital progression, because it's end-to-end -end now digital, so you got legacy systems which should be abstracted away with cloud and DevOps. Now you have the social media managers, which I believe will turn into social business analysts, or SBAs, yeah. um, like a DBA is for database, you're going to have yep. now a new role to administer, essentially what I call the, like the digital airport. Planes are landing, different payloads, you got radar, listening Where engines. do we put it? We put it on Snapchat, we put it on Instagram, we create a blog post, make a video, Where, what do we do? Where, how? And how does it trigger an email, all this stuff. And then Amazon shows the way on spinning stuff up, so I think marketing will be spinning up spot campaigns, like, hey, something just went viral, hey, oh, every, fire everything at it. So I think this brings up a mindset. <laughs> like, who pulls that off one in the tech to do it? So I think Oracle's showing me that they could probably do that. The CMSs need to be reworked, but outside of that, who does that today? Yeah. And who's got the budget for it? So again, right. this is an operational problem. I don't think people are ready for it. Your thoughts? Oh, I completely agree. I think the budget will get, will get solved because it's mostly a human capital issue. Uh, and I think it will be a, a, a marketing budget. We're going to add more data-rich marketers to, to every marketing team. I mean, already we do a lot of consulting in this area for big brands on, on deep social strategy and marketing integration. And, and the, the ones that are the best at it today are the ones that are the most data-centric. The ones who are not saying, well, this seems like a fun piece of social content, but the ones who are yeah. using real testing, real optimization, real data to say this is the right message at the right mm -hmm. time, in the right place, to the right audience, um, the same kind of things that, that all of this makes What real. are your customers telling you? What are you guys doing? I know you do a lot of great work with, with some of your clients. Share some uh, things that you're doing that, you, that, that are uh, working for you, where you're winning, where you see success. Well, it's funny, you, you just talked about this, this sort of org chart problem. That's a lot of what we're doing lately, is, is, is big brands come in and say, look, we've got a sales team, we have a content team, we have a social team, we have a social customer care team. We've got all these people who are kind of bumping up against one another inside the organization. How do we sort this out into a coherent team that, that actually can, can all work together, so one plus one equals three, so it's funny. We're doing a lot of sort of process and role mapping consulting for big yeah. brands to help them figure that out. And then even inside that, sort of the things that we're specializing in right now is this confluence of, of marketing, digital marketing and digital customer service. Huge, huge I got to ask you a question, because this brings up a good point about technology getting ahead of yourself. So I was talking to a customer, I won't say their name, big, huge, multinational, global company, missed the ball on a lot of opportunities because they were caught in sprinkler training. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a danger to training too early, and the sprinkler's yep. a tool out there, and that was had promised a lot of stuff, and it does a certain thing well, but yep. uh, they got all trained on it as the holy grail. <laughs> and then, they, oh my god, wait a minute, we have now new things are popping up, new tools, so the new tool tsunami 
yeah. is coming out. How do you see people solving that problem? Because that's the fear. I don't want to make a commitment and have to unwind it, or hey, yeah. I bought Jive yeah. or Yammer, and I put all this investment in. Now you got to unscramble the omelet. I got to unscramble. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, it's really hard. And it, what's fascinating is you've got a pretty decent set of, of stacks now that, that have good functionality up and down. Uh, but now you've got this whole, in fact, many of them just surrounding us while we're sitting here, this whole new ecosystem of what would considerably, you know, generally speaking, be called a point solution, but a really good stuff that you don't have inside this general thing, which is why this app environment's so interesting, right? You can yeah. actually sort of get best of both worlds in theory. Let's, let's buy into this cloud, buy into this stack, but then have access to all this cool stuff on the outside, wh which keeps that fresh, right? So you're not, you're not bought into a legacy system that, that ages and decays, you're bought into a legacy system that actually grows and optimizes with you. That's really interesting, and that's so different from the previous generation of CRM systems and things like that where you bought it and then it just sort of like, you know, grow, grew old in front of your eyes. Jay, you're going to be busy, president of Convince and Convert. You get a lot of, I'm sure, more clients going to be coming in. New York Times bestseller author, uh, great guy to follow on, uh, on social, great uh, expertise. Thanks for sharing Thanks, guys. your Good insight. Thanks for being here. We'll be right Thanks, back Jay. with more Cube. You're watching theCUBE. We'll be right back after this short break.